Hi, my name is Tim Schneider. I'm from the Technical University in Darmstadt. And today I want to talk about our work on active exploration for robotic manipulation, which was conducted in collaboration with Mitsubishi. So I think we can all agree that robotic manipulation stands as a largely unsolved topic. And I believe that one of the key issues we are facing is that accurate models of the environment are usually not available in these settings. While we might have a somewhat accurate model of the robot itself, what we usually don't have is a model of the complex contact dynamics that are happening in the scene. And so what we can do to alleviate this issue is to learn this model from data. But the issue we are facing here is that data on the real robots is extremely scarce and expensive. The reason being that the robot has a limited lifetime and is very expensive to run. So I think what we have to do is we have to make sure that the data we collect is as useful as possible for model learning. And this is what we are going to look into in this work, how we can achieve this. But let's first start with a problem statement. In this work, we consider a finite horizon MDP setting. That means we have an agent and an environment. The agent can interact with the environment by choosing actions A, and the environment will in turn respond with its full state X and a reward R. And the objective of the agent is to maximize the reward it is receiving from the environment. And now what makes this tricky for the agent is that both the dynamics and the reward distribution are assumed to be completely unknown a priori to the agent. And the only way the agent has to learn about those is to constantly probe the environment with new actions, observe the outcomes, and then try to make sense of what it is observing. And the way we do this in this work is to model both the dynamics and the reward with neural network condition Gaussian distributions. And these then get fit to the data we observe in, in the trials. And the question is now, how exactly do we generate data in order to learn these models as efficiently as possible? But the question that we have to answer first is what actually is a good data point? And so here we take inspiration from the optimal experiment design literature, where the quality of data points is usually measured by their expected information gain, or also called mutual information. And the way the expected information gain of a given policy pi is defined is as the expectation over future observations of the KL divergence between the model posterior, if we made those observations, and the model prior. Or to put it intuitively, we are computing how much we expect our belief in the correct model parameters to change if we follow policy pi. So ideally, we would like to follow a policy pi that will give us an observation that changes our belief in our model as drastically as possible. Because it is exactly these observations that tell us something completely new about our model that we didn't know and also didn't model before. So what we propose in this work is to use information gain directly as a planning objective. That means in every step, we plan ahead in order to maximize mutual information between the model parameter theta and the observations we are expecting to make. And since not all states in the state space are equally useful for the task we are trying to solve, we also augment this term by the expected reward. And what this does now is that the agent still explores the entire state space and gathers as much information as possible about its environment. But at the same time, it focuses more strongly on these areas of high reward. And thus, we will have a more accurate model along these trajectories of high reward where we actually need the model to be accurate. Now, I realize that all of this has been very abstract so far. So I would like to show you now how this looks on a robot in our experiments. So this is one of the experiments we conducted in which we designed an environment that is as hard to explore as possible. And the way this works is that the robot has to push this little red ball into the target zone up here. But what is tricky about the environment is first of all, the table is slightly tilted. So whenever the ball drops, it rolls down here and cannot be recovered anymore. And the second thing is that the robot is completely unaware where the goal is because it will only receive a reward once it moves the ball into the goal for the first time. This is the only way it has to learn about the goal. And that means that this agent has to explore the entire environment without any kind of extrinsic feedback. Now, unsurprisingly, if you simply rely on Gaussian noise for exploration, like many reinforcement learning algorithms do, we simply keep dropping the ball every time and never really leave the lower half of this table. 
as you can also see on this ball position histogram here on the right. And that renders classical reinforcement learning methods like SAC or MBPO completely unable to solve this task. Our method, on the other hand, achieves an extensive state space coverage already fairly early on. And the reason for this is simply that the information gain of observing something again that you have seen before is significantly lower than the information gain of seeing something new. And what that means is that our method is constantly searching for new states it hasn't seen before and is constantly learning more about its environment. And in the end, after discovering this goal, you can see that the sampling rate along these trajectories of high reward that lead up to the goal are significantly higher, which means that the model is more accurate along these trajectories where it actually needs to be accurate. And in the end, we obtain a model that we can use fairly robustly in order to move this ball up into this target zone. And finally, we also conducted an extensive study of our method on the real system. So what you can see here are six uh, different configurations, including three different table inclinations for the same task you saw before. And uh, we train our method here from scratch on the real system. That means there's no transfer learning going on and also no pre-training and simulation. And our method manages to solve this task in five out of these six configurations. Yeah, and that already brings me to the conclusion of this talk. So in this work, we presented a model-based reinforcement learning algorithm that solves very challenging sparse reward manipulation tasks by exploring them efficiently and learning a model. We demonstrate that this method also works on the real system. However, an issue that we have to address in the future is scalability. Uh, you can imagine as the system dimensions grow, at some point we simply need too much data to train a dense model. So I believe what we really need here are really strong inductive biases that hopefully allow us to train very complex models fairly data efficiently. Yeah, and with that, uh, I would like to thank my collaborators that you can see here on this slide, and I would like to thank you for your attention. <laughs>